Hi, thank you for clicking on this video and today what I'm going to share with you is how you create a video player in your Flutter web project. So I have with me here a Flutter web project with a video player that is playing right now. So you can scrub over the different time and then at the same time we have these different buttons. So you could see here this is a play button, pause button and then you see the timeline and you can control the volume and also you can activate the loop so let's go to the end of the video and let's see a short snippet of this video all right let's get started with creating this project so inside the video player flutter pub dev package it only says Android and iOS, however, the web version has been implemented. It's not updated yet, but it's okay. If you scroll down all the way at the bottom, you can see the web platform version has been supported. So let's install our video player package. Go to your pub spec YAML and just insert the video player according to the latest version. Once you have installed it, now let's copy and paste this example code at the bottom and then paste it and for this link it is not working so i have a link of the same movie that is in the example in the link in the description all right so let me go through what the code is all about the first thing is that we have to initialize a video player controller when are we going to initialize it during the initial state so network basically means we are able to get the video through a url and then we will use the method initialize at the same time we will use this set state to ensure the first frame that's being initialized all right then if you were to go to the bottom over here you could see that we have a center video player in the inside the video player we use an aspect ratio widget that we got from the controller dot value dot aspect ratio. So the property aspect ratio has been given to us once we have initialized our video player controller. Then we also have our video player as our child widget using the controller that we have. If you see the video itself without the different play button and such, that is the video player so let's save this and let's run our app okay so once you have rendered your flutter web project it looks something like this so this whole black rectangle is the video player widget and then you can see our floating action button over here so if you look back at our code our floating action button uses the is playing property to see whether our video is playing we can use the pause and play method in order for us to play or pause our video. At the same time, we can use the is playing value to show the pause or play arrow icon. So this is our example project. So it's currently working now. Okay, so the thing is we are able to play and pause the video. What if we want to go to the middle of the video? That's where the progress indicator widget comes in handy. So let's create it. Before we create a progress indicator, let's change some layout first. So let's change the center into a column and let's convert the child into children. Okay, if we save this, now our video has been pushed up. Okay, so one thing that I want to talk about also is the aspect ratio. So the aspect ratio allows us to have the same aspect ratio according to the different sizes. So if we were to make it smaller, you could see that our video aspect ratio remains the same. If we go bigger, then it fills up accordingly until to the maximum to the abyss. So there's bottom overflow by 7.1 pixels. How do we do that? Is we can make it into a single child scroll view. We can wrap the column with a single child scroll view. If you save this, then we don't have any overflowed pixels. So if we will spread all of this all the way, you could see that we can go up and down. All right. The next thing that we want to do is we want to change this ternary into an if statement. 
So let's put in if controller dot value dot initialized. Oh, it's over here. Now let's remove this container and ternary and this statement over here and let's save this. All right, it looks way better. Okay, so we are going to put the progress indicator at the bottom of our video player. So let's insert the video progress indicator that requires our video player controller. And then there is this parameter called allow scrubbing. So when it's true, you're able to move left to right. And then at the same time, we have a padding. So let's make it to 10 and let's save this. If we play the video, now you can see there is buffered. We can just skip to over here. Why not we go over here? All right, so we are pretty much okay with the controls. However, if you could see inside our column, this if statement only covers our aspect ratio, which has our child video player. We want our video progress indicator and video player to be initialized once our video has rendered. So how are we going to do that? Well, we can group them in a list, but the element type list widget can't be assigned. So what can we do is we can have a spread operator. So this means that if our video has been rendered, then we will return the aspect ratio, video player, and the video progress indicator. The next thing that we want to do is we want to create a row of features and buttons that I have shown you guys earlier. So for example, like a play button and the timeline and the volume. So let's do that. So let's create a row and let's have children and let's create the icon button. So we can just copy and paste using the example code that we have copied. So this has to be wrapped in the icon widget. Same goes to this set state method. Let's put inside our on pressed. So let's save this. And now you can see that we have a play button over here. So if we press this, it works. Great. Now we can remove our floating action button. All right, the next thing that we want to see is the length of the video and the video position. So what we can do is we can create a text widget and basically this is what we want to see. For example, if it's 10 minutes, it will look something like that. So we can get these values or the time from the controller. So what you can do is to put controller.position and controller.value.duration. So this position and this is the duration. So actually you can get the position through the value also. So let's do this to make it consistent. So let's save this. Now you can see the time. However, the format is a little bit weird. So let's create a function to reformat our text. All right, so we can just create a simple function that says convert to minutes and seconds where we will take the minutes and the seconds and return a string. So let's use this. So we have used the convert to minutes seconds using the position duration and the duration duration. All right, so let's see what it actually looks like. All right, so the first thing is that it doesn't update when the video is playing. However, when we stop it, then it shows us where exactly our position and then we have this 68, which is what we don't want. So let's solve this error where we are unable to see the time live. Since this is a stateful widget, what we need to do is that we have to make our text widget change according to the state. So how we can change the text widget is we first need to create two variables called video length and video position with the duration type. Secondly, what you need to do is you need to add a listener using set state. So what this means is that our current video position, which we are listening to, is changed according to where exactly the current playback position of our video. 
So then we can use this video position and then we can put it side over here. So let's save this. Okay. So we play our video. Now our text is changed accordingly. Great. So the next one is video position. So what we can do is that we can put it inside this set state. So we can just copy this and then let's just change the word length over here. Sorry, duration. So we can make use of this video length. All right, great. Okay, the next thing is the formatting. The formatting is very weird. So what you can do is you can have this ternary, meaning that the minutes, if we look back, if it's less than 10, I assume that it only shows one digit. So what we can do is we can just put in the zero at the start and then the number that's less than 10 will be inserted. If not, then we will just put in both of the numbers. So let's see if these minutes work. Great, so you can see zero, zero and zero, 09. However, we are going to do the same thing with the seconds. So let's copy everything over here and paste it over here. And let's change this in minutes to in seconds. All right, so let's save this. You could see that our seconds has more than 60. So that means it's actually giving us more than 60 seconds. So you could see the return value can be greater than 59. So what I do is I create a variable called past seconds with the modulo 60, meaning that if it reaches more than 60, it will just return us the remainder. So if we were to change all of this into the past seconds, don't have to use this anymore. So if we save this, we go back. Now you could see that there isn't any higher number than two digits. So if we go about all of our different timing, you can see that our seconds are perfectly okay. All right, great. To be sure, if it's more than one hour, let's change this. So we can copy this whole thing and we can paste this over here. Then we can change this with parsed minutes. And then this will be in minutes and this will be minutes. All right, so this will help us make sure that the minutes, if it's more than one hour, it will just gives us 59 at most or zero, zero if it exits more than an hour. All right, now the next thing I want to do is the volume. So how do we do the volume? Is that first we just need an icon. So inside our row, let's insert our icon. Let's put in a comma. Let's put in icon and then icons dot volume. Maybe let's put mute. Okay. And then at the same time, let's have a slider. So the slider requires a value. Let's put in zero and the on changed. Mm, what is that? So the on change actually returns us a value. So let's call it volume with an underscore. Okay. So we save this. Now we have an actual slider, which is interactive, kind of. We need to slide it around. So that's where we need to make this unchanged. So let's see whether we have a volume property inside our controller. So let's see. All right, value, volume. We do. Okay, then what we can do is we can change the value over here. That means that we need to do a set state. So first thing is that we need to initialize a variable. Let's call it a double and let's call it volume and let's set it to zero first. So we go to the volume and let's paste in the volume over here. And then let's have the set state method also. Okay. So we are not going to use this property. We are going to set the volume. So there's this thing called controller dot set volume with our returned volume over here. So let's uh, change this, uh, changed volume. All right, so we want to set our volume using set state to the changed volume. So you can type in volume equal to changed volume. 
So let's make it grammatically correct. So change the volume. Okay, so at the same time, the value that the volume sets is 0, 0.0 and 1.0. So inside the slider, it has the minimum and the maximum. So let's set the minimum to 0 and then the maximum to 1. So we won't exit more than one. If not, it has an error. Okay. However, do we want to start our initial volume at zero? So that means we just put it as 0.5. Okay. So let's save this. If you were to play this, only I can hear it, but it works. It works. It works. However, when you see the actual web app, you could see that if I were to slide it to the left end of the slider, this icon will show like this, but if I were to go to the highest one, then there will be more of the sound waves coming out. So it's not an animation, but it's just returning the icon. So there's three types of, of volume icon. So I just created a simple function that's called animated volume icon that takes in the volume, which is a double, and it returns the icon data. So the volume mute doesn't have the sound waves, if the volume is less than 0 0.5, then volume is like this. And then else, if it's not 0 or 0 0.5, that means it's higher, then we're going to have volume up. So we're going to use animated volume icon. We're going to place it in our icon widget over here. And then we're going to use the volume variable that we've created. Okay, so now you could see that, yeah, it's kind of animating. However, it looks a bit ugly, so let's put in some spacing in between. So we can have a sized box with a width of maybe 10. Let's have a comma. Let's save this. Okay, so if we scroll all the way here, look, that looks great. Okay, lastly, what if we have the video at the end and we want to loop it? Imagine that we are listening to a music video and we want to loop it because we are crazy about the song. So we're going to have a loop button. So the same thing, we're going to create an icon button. But first, we're going to create a spacer because we're going to push our loop button at the right hand side. So let's put in the spacer and then let's add in our icon button. All right, so we created an icon loop button. You can see over here. So at the same time, it changes its color when I press the loop. So what you can do is you can use the color parameters. You can actually listen to the controller value. Value is looping. And now you can make use of the is looping boolean. So if it's looping, then we can put it as green. If not, then we can put it as black. Okay. Next thing is the on pressed. So we have set volume, then we have set looping also. So let's have this function. So if a controller dot set looping. All right. Do we need to create a variable? Not really, because we can actually get the value of the looping over here. And since we are only switching from true to false, what we can do is we can have this exclamation mark to invert the boolean. So let's save this. So if we press on the loop button over here and we play it and let's hope that it actually loops. So let's see the bird pooping. All right, so it actually loops, great. There we have it. We have a video player inside our Flutter web project. However, one thing to note is that this thing is actually a window itself. You can actually show the controls over here, which is a bit weird. So um, that's one bug, I guess, uh, or they don't purposely show this thing because we are able to use the API to create our own widgets to control the video that we have. So that's about it. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want more Flutter Web videos, uh, subscribe and comment down below or what other packages you think you want me to go through inside your Flutter web projects. All right, have a nice day, stay safe, and bye-bye.